Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a surgeon question and answer session all about minimally invasive multivalve surgery. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Eric Weiss, who's the co-director of the Structural Heart Program at Advocate Aurora Health in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dr. Weiss, it is great to see you again. Thanks for joining us today. Adam, thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Dr. Weiss, I'm real excited for this conversation. And to get started, how often do you see patients in your practice that have multiple forms of valve disease? Well, actually, Adam, it's, it's really quite common uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, oftentimes patients who have valvular heart disease, um, uh, the, the, whatever's causing that heart disease is not just affecting one valve, but can affect multiple valves, whether it's something that's acquired or something that they were born with. But the second thing that, that's of notable is that oftentimes a significant problem with one valve can actually cause back pressure in the heart that can lead to a problem in another valve. So it, I would say that, that, that it's very frequent to see patients who come to me with a valve problem who have multiple valve diseases. Um, sometimes they both need treatment. Sometimes one needs treatment and we can just watch the other. Dr. Weiss, I'm curious to know, what are the causes of multiple valve disorders? Actually, it's uh, interesting because the same factors that cause multiple heart valve disease are really the same factors that cause single heart valve disease. And I think when you talk about heart valve disease, it's really, uh, there's really two big, big categories of what can cause heart valve disease. There is acquired heart valve disease and congenital or, or genetic uh, the genetic cause of heart valve disease. When you think about acquired heart valve disease, it's really the same types of risk factors. Some of the same types of risk factors that can cause vascular heart disease or coronary heart disease can cause valvular heart disease. So things that we know about like uh, smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, uh, you know, those are the factors that can cause vascular heart disease. Well, they can also cause valvular heart disease. On the other hand, there's also a big uh, group of valvular heart diseases that are caused by congenital reasons or genetic reasons. Um, sometimes you can be born with an abnormally structured heart valve that can lead it to fail a little bit earlier in life. And there's also genetic or familial syndromes that can lead to val valvular heart disease. So whether it's multivalve disease or single valve disease, it really falls into one of those two broad categories. Either it's something that's acquired or something that's congenital. In other words, something that you were born with. Dr. Weiss, are patients with multiple forms of valve disease at more risk? They do have more risk than a single valve because the more valves that are infect, affected in the heart, uh, you know, the more stress and strain that the heart is going to be under. So when you're talking about different um, chambers, different components of the heart, and each of them are under stress, whether it's blood that's leaking back because the valve is insufficient, or whether it's blood that can't get through the valve well enough because the blood is because the valve is stenotic or too tight, um, all of those are going to put the patient at, at, at risk and it's going to put the heart under stress. So the more uh, components that you add, the greater risk the patient is, is in. And then furthermore, the risk of fixing the valves becomes a little bit higher because now you're talking about a more complicated procedure. In other words, instead of just replacing or repairing one valve, now you're talking about repairing or replacing two valves or three valves. So I would say that each valve that is involved makes the risk level just a little bit higher for each individual patient. Dr. Weiss, a big question from the patients is, how do you treat multiple valve disease? Well, I think when you're talking about multiple valve disease, the important thing to remember is that, you know, at our center and at all big valve centers, these decisions are usually made in, a, in sort of a multidisciplinary approach where, you're, where you have cardiologists, heart surgeons, and, and, and valvular heart specialists who come together to talk about what the best treatment for the patient is. When we see a patient with multivalve disease, we think about it in the same way that we think about single valve disease. And that is uh, the way I think about single valve disease is I try my best in every patient to avoid having to do what's called a sternotomy or an open heart or an open heart incision. And so we use a variety of techniques to keep valve treatment for valve disease very minimally invasive. Um, uh, you know, we often do uh, minimally invasive multivalve surgery, whether it be repair or replacement through the side of the chest in a, in a minimally invasive approach. We sometimes do a combination of transcatheter valves with open valve repair and replacement, um, uh, you know, the, a, a TAVR valve with a minimally invasive mitral valve replacement, for example. Um, 
uh, or sometimes we will do two transcatheter valves without having to do any type of open surgery. So really we try to tailor the operation to the patient um, in, in a way that gives them the quickest recovery, uh, the least invasive, and, and gets them back to their lifestyle a, a, as quick as possible, which, because that's what, that's what everybody wants. And we don't have to sacrifice that, uh, that approach, even when we're dealing with multiple valves versus just one valve. Dr. Weiss, I love hearing about all these minimally invasive innovations, but I'm sure one of the big questions that patients have is, what are your outcomes for minimally invasive multi-valve surgery? We've had excellent outcomes with both single valve uh, surgery as well as multi-valve surgery. And, you know, at our institution, um, our uh, risk, I tell people that the, our risk of mortality uh, or death from a multi-valve, minimally invasive multi-valve surgery is about half a percent. And the risk of stroke is also about half a percent. Um, and uh, and this, is, this is similar whether it's a single valve uh, repair replacement or a multi-valve repair replacement. So we really haven't sacrificed our outcomes at all by providing uh, the ability to do multiple valves through a minimally invasive uh, approach. And, and the same is true when we do transcatheter valves. So we have a, a you know, less than 1% uh, risk of death and stroke in, in our uh, series of transcatheter patients, whether it's a transcatheter aortic valve replacement or also uh, transcatheter mitral valve uh, uh, repairs and replacements. So I think that that's an important point and, and one that all patients should be, should be uh, aware of is the outcomes of, of, the, of the surgery at the center you're going to. And uh, what I think is that the best outcomes come from, uh, from two things. One, uh, having a team that's, that works together and is very experienced, and two, doing a lot of it. And so I think that we have both of those things at our center. We have, a, we have a very experienced team that works well together, and also we do a tremendous amount of valve, of valve surgery. And so, you know, I'm really proud of the outcomes that we have here. Dr. Weiss, congratulations to you and your team there at Advocate Aurora Health in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, for those fantastic outcomes. And on behalf of our entire community, thanks so much for taking the time today to educate us on minimally invasive multi-valve surgery. Well, well, Adam, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this, this subject. And I really appreciate all that you do for patients with heart valve disease. It, it, this is a, a tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, program and website and, and thanks for all that you do. Great, thanks so much, Dr. Weiss, take care. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen, or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.